Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You do not have to be alone with your situation. God loves you, he cares about you and he's got a good plan for your life. Just believe. Well, this weekend I'm uh, talking about 10 of the things that have been what I feel are some of the most important things that I've learned in my 37 year journey of walking with God. Now, I was born again a long time before that. I actually was saved when I was nine years old, but I didn't really even try to walk with God or have a relationship with God until Dave and I got married. And then for a long time, it was just, I was sincere in my heart, but I learned a lot about religion, but I still didn't have that relationship with God through Christ. And um, when I finally got serious, and you know, you, there's a difference in just going to church and being serious. How many of you know that? There's a difference in just going to God when you have a problem and you want him to solve that problem, and God being the center of your whole life and letting him be involved in everything that you do. And to be honest, God doesn't want to live in a little Sunday morning box that a lot of people like to keep him in. Let him out. Come on, God, you can come out for 45 minutes at Sunday morning and go back in your box and I'll just take it from here the rest of the week and let you know if I have a problem. So if you're not real serious, then what I'm saying this weekend is not going to mean a whole lot to you, but I believe you are serious or you wouldn't have taken the time to be here. Now, we may have some people channel surfing right now, and you don't, you don't know how you feel about any of this. Well, I'm just encouraging you to stay with us for a little bit because I'm going to tell you some things today that's going to help you really enjoy your life and have a better life than perhaps you've ever had before in your whole life. So I had a real rough childhood like many of you, got a bad start, but I'm happy to say that just because you have a bad start doesn't mean that you can't have a good finish. And I personally believe that it's how we finish that's the most important thing. So no matter where you're at right now, or no matter what you've done, or what's been done to you, I want you to know that God has a great plan for your redemption, and he wants to walk you out of your mess and into what we fondly call the promised land in the Bible. And the promised land actually was a real place that the Israelites traveled to, but it was a type and a shadow of our walk with God. We come out of bondage in Egypt, which is bondage to sin, and we all, like it or not, travel through a wilderness. And that wilderness really is our own soulish, selfish, carnal living. We're learning in that period of time how to trust God how to receive the grace of God, how to keep God first in our life, and so many other things. Now, if you never learn those things, then you never will make it to the promised land. You may go to heaven when you die, but you're not going to enjoy your journey here. And I don't know about you, but I'm all for enjoying the journey. I want to enjoy every single solitary second, every nanosecond of my life. I want to be able to enjoy it. We've talked about grace already this weekend. Not just how to be saved by grace, but how to live by grace. How to let God help you do every single thing that you do. Last night, we talked about the mind, mouth, and moods. And today, we're going to talk about the two last things. I want to talk to you today about always believing. Coming to Christ like a little child and just say, I believe. I trust you. I believe. I may not see it, I may not feel it, but I believe. I've been thinking about believing and, and about faith and, you know, it, it, it's not something you do with your head. <laughs> now our mind gets renewed and I think now, and probably for many of you who've walked with God a long time, I do believe all this stuff in my mind too because my mind's been renewed, but there's still times when my mind can't get a hold of something. When I look at a situation, and even sometimes not just for me, but in other people, 
I'll look at their situation or look at that person and just, you know, I want to believe, but with what I'm looking at, it's like, uh, 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 I don't know. But thank God, we're more than just a mind and a body. We are first and foremost a spirit. And it's with our spirit, man, that we believe. I didn't see Jesus die, but I know that I know that I know, I know that he did. Well, see, a, a person who doesn't understand faith would say, well, how, how do you know that? Well, I just know because God has revealed it to me in the spirit, just like many of you. Really, salvation is an, is an amazing thing, how God will just give you that, that faith to reach out and believe. But you do have to be willing to ignore or go beyond your own thoughts and your own feelings. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. But faith is substance and it's evidence. It's just not a material evidence or a material substance. And I just want to say to you this morning by way of encouragement that the spiritual realm is really much more real than the natural realm. We are not in here by ourselves today. There are angels in this building. Amen. I said there are angels in this building. All of us have a guardian angel. You have an angel that goes with you everywhere that you go. Now, I've never seen mine, but I believe the Word of God. And when you decide to believe and just get away from all the doubt and unbelief and the double-mindedness and the trying to figure everything out, see, I believe that we're never alone. Never alone. Even when you feel alone, you're never alone. Because God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I am with you always, even unto the very ends of the earth. God is with you, no matter how you feel. It is amazing how wonderful, now stick with me today, it's amazing how wonderful life can be if we just decide to get out of this brain, come on, and just go deeper to what we sense in the spirit. I'll give you an example. I remember one time doing a, a meeting and we had planned this special meeting. It was on, the, on a holiday weekend and we thought, well, it would be a special thing. You know, lots of people would, would come out. Well, as it turned out, it wasn't too well attended, which is kind of a downer for a, a minister anyway. So I probably already had a couple of strikes against me before I even got up on the platform because I'm disappointed because all the people didn't come. And then I didn't feel too great about my message that weekend. And so when I got done, I started the thing that we do until we learn better. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. You know, I, you know, it's pointless to think about how you shouldn't have done something that you've already done. <laughs> I, I mean, if you've made a mistake over here and you wasted that day, then don't spend today regretting the mistake that you made yesterday because then you waste today. So even if I shouldn't have done the meeting, I did it. I had a choice to believe, well, this was a big mistake or somebody here today got helped. Somebody here needed what I had to say. Believing is wonderful. Believing keeps you happy. And I don't know about you, but I've just decided that I'm going to be happy. You see, I've lived more in my life than what I've got left. And that's kind of an unusual thought when you get to that point. You see, I realized a couple of years ago, I've, I've already done two-thirds of this. i got about a third left, and I want to make it count. Amen? I want to make sure that I don't waste any of my days, and I want to really enjoy my life. And that's the second thing I'm going to talk to you about today. We're going to end with enjoying your everyday life. But first believing. It's something that we can choose to do, but it has to be done in the Spirit. We believe the Word of God. Believing is an absolutely amazing thing. So I was having these regrets, probably shouldn't have done this meeting, had the wrong message, nobody got anything out of that. Dave and I started our drive home, and I was just tormented in my mind. 
Is there anybody here today that realizes that when you live in your mind, you can live in total torment all the time? Because your mind doesn't, does not agree with the Word of God. It agrees with the world. And so when your mind, your mouth, and your feelings all pile up on you, you better have somewhere to go. And that's like deeper into the Spirit. So this is what I felt that God put on my heart. He said, shut your mind off and tell me what's in your heart about this situation. I want you to start trying that in your life when you start getting rattled and all upset. Just shut your mind off for a minute. What's in my heart? What's in my heart? Well, I believe I did preach today what you put on my heart. As a matter of fact, if I really tell you what's in my heart, Lord, I don't think it was bad. I think it was pretty good. And, uh, you know, I thought we were supposed to do this. You didn't tell us not to. And it wasn't attended great, but it wasn't horrible. And so, yeah, everything's pretty good. I mean, just in a few seconds, I went from being tormented, full of doubt and unbelief and misery and thinking the whole thing was a failure to knowing. See, there's a difference in thinking and knowing. If you can get a hold of this today, I think it's going to elevate you to a new place. We spend way too much time in our mind. And believe me, the devil offers us all kinds of thoughts that do not agree with the Word of God. We have to learn to believe what God says, and we grasp it by faith. We reach out and we grasp it with the Spirit. I want to live more in the Spirit. I want to walk more in the Spirit and not just walk in my feelings or my own mind or, you know, my own will, but in the Spirit. Is anybody with me today? We want to begin to walk in the Spirit. What is my Spirit saying about this situation? Is it really hopeless like my brain wants me to think it is? Or are all things possible with God? Does, does God still have a miracle for me? Does he love everybody equally? If he's ever done anything for anybody, surely he can do something for me. He's no respecter of persons. So believing. I think you can decide to. If you want to. Or you can keep making yourself miserable all the time, trying to figure things out in life. Always believe in Romans 1.17. It says, in the Word there's a righteousness revealed that leads us from faith to faith to faith. A righteousness revealed that leads us from faith to faith to faith. That righteousness is that right standing with God. Oh my gosh, things begin to change when you know that God loves you, and you know that God is not mad at you, and you don't even say, well, you know, how, how could I have this problem in my life if God loves me? You say, yes, I have this problem in my life, but that's no sign or symptom that God doesn't love me. God loves me, and I can trust Him to bring me through this problem, and I can trust Him to take it and use it for good in my life. Amen? God loves me, and I trust Him. Some of you know that I had breast cancer. Wasn't expecting to go to the doctor and get that report. I just went for my little checkup thing and had a mammogram, got a call back. There's something on here that doesn't look good. It's small, but we really feel like you should get it checked out. So got the biopsy, thinking that was just all going to come back fine. Well, it didn't come back fine came back and said, although this is a very small tumor, it is, it is a very fast-growing type of cancer. And so back then, they really just recommended a, a mastectomy. They didn't, they didn't do the other things that they do today. And so here, within like a week's period of time, I went from a woman of faith and power preaching the gospel all over the place to seemingly being in a position where none of what I was preaching was working for me. But God spoke some things to my heart very early in that little journey because, you know, when you hear things like that, fear just hits you. 
And there were some things that God told me to say and some things that he did not want to hear me say. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I want to hear you say, God loves me. I trust him. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. There were five things like that, all really positive things. And I walked around for the seven or 10 days before the surgery saying those things over and over and over. And when doubt and unbelief would hit my mind, I would say, I trust God. I trust God. God's going to take care of this. He loves me. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. They tell me that when I woke up from the anesthesia, that I was saying all things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And the people that were there waiting for me to come to, you know, where you're in that kind of dreamy land state, they said, you were so sweet. You were ministering to the nurses and loving everybody. I said, see there, it is down in there somewhere. You just gotta knock me out to get to it. Well, as it, as it turned out, you know, they checked my lymph nodes like they always do, and, and none of the cancer cells had gotten to my lymph nodes, so I didn't have to have any kind of treatment after that. Every year I go and get checked, and every year I get a clean bill of health, every year. Now, but about three years ago, I went for my regular checkup. Well, no, that, that's not what happened. I was, I was having some back problems. And so they did a MRI on my back and the report came back. There's some spots on your spine that we're concerned about. They knew I'd had cancer. You got to tell them that. So they looked at it and I had to have some more tests and then I had to have a whole bone scan and you know, they said, we're very concerned that the breast cancer you had is metastasized to your spine. And so, you know, you got these two weeks in between, you know, where you're waiting to get the test, waiting to get the test back. And you know what? I can honestly tell you that I just really wasn't all that afraid because I just thought, now I didn't want, it, want them to tell me that I had cancer, but I just thought, God, I'm in your hands. I'm going to live till you're done with me. I've had a good ride, and I believe that you can take care of this. And I refuse to start getting this negative attitude and living in fear. Well, when it came back, they did a bone scan on my whole entire body, so I'm here to tell you there's nothing in there that's bothering anybody. I mean, I got it all. And this is what they said. Well, there's no cancer. I said, okay, so what are the spots on my spine? And they said, well, it actually looks like a cancer had metastasized to your bone and it healed itself. I thought, no, it didn't heal itself. I wanted to share that because there may be people here today that you've had a bad report from the doctor. You just, maybe people, I mean, there may be people laying in the hospital right now watching this program and you're like, there's no hope for me. I'm so scared. This is not, not going to work. I'm going to die. Instead of saying all that, just say, God, I trust you. I trust you. And you know what? If you're watching from home and you've not received Christ as your savior, Please call the number on your screen and let one of my workers pray with you and lead you into a relationship with Jesus Christ. You do not have to be alone with your situation. God loves you, he cares about you, and he's got a good plan for your life. Just believe. Can I tell you something? Believing doesn't cost anything. Unbelief makes you miserable. Believing makes you happy. You know what I've said publicly, hoping that a lot of unbelievers will hear this? You know, if you're an atheist or an agnostic or you've decided that you don't believe that God is real, if you're wrong, 
you're in big trouble. <laughs> but if I spend my whole life believing in something, even if it turned out at the end that it wasn't true, which I know is not going to happen, but I still wouldn't have lost anything because I've been so happy I can hardly stand it. So I say give it a try and see if you like it better than the way you're living. God loves you. He created you. You're not an oops or a bleep or a boops or a burp or whatever. The world was created by God with his very own hand carefully and purposely. We didn't just have some time when some cell out of the ocean crawled up on the beach and began to evolve into what we now have. Nobody's ever bothered to tell you where that first cell came from, by the way. <laughs> Believe. Believe. Let's look at the raising of Lazarus in John chapter 11. You don't have to wonder if your kids are going to turn out all right. You can believe they will. And even if they're in trouble right now, you can believe they're going to change. <laughs> Let me ask a question. How many of you want to enjoy your life? All right, you cannot do that unless you learn how to believe. <laughs> we go from faith to faith to faith to faith, not from faith to doubt and unbelief and back to faith and well, I can believe this, but I can't believe that. And we just, just believe. It drives the devil nuts. Come like a little child and just believe. In John chapter 11, there's a wonderful account of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And we can get many great examples out of this, but let's start in verse 5. John 11, verse 5. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. They were his dear friends, and he held them in loving esteem. Therefore, because he loved them, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he still stayed two days longer in the same place and didn't bother to go and help him. Because he loved him, you would think that he would have ran right over there and fixed the problem. But do you see that? Because he loved him, he waited two more days. See, you think when you're having to wait, that means God doesn't love you. According to this, it's a symptom that he does love you. <laughs> because maybe God's got something deeper in mind than your immediate relief. You know what, if I didn't go through that whole cancer thing for any reason other than to stand up and, and give other people hope. Sometimes we go through things and it doesn't even have anything to do with us. It's something that God's using us for for somebody else's encouragement later on in life. And you don't have to figure out what you did wrong or what your sin is or, you know, why doesn't God love me and all that junk. You just say, God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. I love him, and the devil is not going to win. This is going to work out for my good. He loved them. <laughs> Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Therefore, he waited and didn't go help them right then. You're not getting as much out of that as I do. It just... That just amazes me. It's very important to learn how to enjoy your journey in life. And one of the ways that you can do that is by simply believing. Believe the promises of God. Believe the best of people. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope and joy fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Sometimes if you're miserable, you simply find out that you've just gotten negative and you need to just make a decision to get back to believing God's word, just believe what he says.
ఆయన కలర్ రోజు నేను వావు దగ్గర నీళ్ళు తాడానికి వెళ్తూ ఉండే అందరు లాబడికి వెళ్ళి చదువుకోవాలనుకుంటే కానీ పోకపోతుండే అందుకే అందరిలా నాకు ఫ్రెండ్స్ లేరు ఎప్పుడు చూసినా మా పిల్లలు బాగుండరండి ఎప్పుడు చూసినా ఈ రోజునాలు జ్వరం అవుతుండే డాక్టర్ కాడికి వెళ్దామంటే పైసలు లేవు ఇంకా పిల్లలు అట్నే పండుకొని ఉంటారు వీ హవ్ బీన్ ఏబుల్ టు ఐడెంటిఫై దీస్ విలేజెస్ త్రూ గవర్నమెంట్ అండ్ త్రూ సమ్ లోకల్ ఫ్యాస్టర్స్ సో దిస్ వెల్స్ వాట్ వీ ఆర్ డ్రిల్లింగ్ త్రూ జాయిస్ మైర్ మినిస్ట్రీస్ నో వీ టేక్ ప్రాపర్ కేర్ టు ఫైండ్ వేర్ ఈస్ ద గుడ్ వాటర్ through a good water diviner it will take about 3 uh, days to go to that village and drill the bore well to give fresh water to the villagers na pillalu kuda badiki pottaru నేను కూడా పొలం పనికి పోయి బాగా సంపాదిస్తాను ఈ గ్రామంలో బోర్ వేయించడం ద్వారా ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి జీవితంలో ఎంతో మార్పు వచ్చింది ఇక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళందరి అవసరాలు తీరుతున్నాయి కాబట్టి యేసు ప్రభు దేవుని తెలుసుకొని సంఘంలో సభ్యులుగా చేరడానికి ఎంతో ఆరాట పడుతున్నారు మాకు ఇక్కడ ఒక బోర్ వేయించి మా ఆత్మీయ దాహాన్ని తీరుస్తున్నారు మేము పాస్టర్ ద్వారా ఆ నిజమైన దేవుని తెలుసుకొని ఈ సంఘంలో ఆ యేసు ప్రభుని ఆరాధిస్తున్నాం Have you ever wanted to help hurting people, but you feel like you can't make a difference? I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters. Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly. But we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. you can be a world changer.